What I'm doing here is I'm getting the tongue wet because I want all the colors to kind of meld together, right? And um, there are a lot of colors in the tongue. It's not just pink. Uh, there's a lot of cool colors as well. And so I am making sure that I look at my original reference photo a lot. And the colors I'm using are Holbein Rose and M. Graham Naphthol Red, which is my all-time favorite, most loved Naphthol Red. And if you watched my recent um, video on reds, I myself discovered while making the video that uh, the the ink they use to make Naphthol Red is the same exact ink used to make um, Windsor Red. So I thought that was very interesting. Um, I almost think this is too cool. There's too much rose in it. The rose color is a pretty cool color, so I'm going to add some more Naphthol and just add a little bit more red. And I don't want to, you don't want to overdo a tongue. Let me see if I can get this zoomed in a little bit better for you guys. How's that? I want you guys to see what I'm doing right now is using a wet in wet technique to keep this tongue really nice and soft. Because we all like a good soft tongue, don't we? <laughs> I'm not alluding to anything, but anyway. <laughs> Alright, so now in the shadow area... Um, this is going to be darker, so you can add a little bit more ultramarine. Ultramarine is my go-to blue. Also, while researching paint colors for my upcoming blue, my favorite blue color, um, basically it was pretty obvious that the conclusion should be that... Um, Ultramarine is the number one best blue in the world. Basically, you don't need to try anything else. Of course, I don't paint with just ultramarine, but it is, I would say, my blue that I go to for 80% of my paintings. So this is too neon purple, so I can always go back and tone it down. I'm going to soak some of this back out. I'm going to put some burnt sienna in here to kind of gray it down a little bit. And maybe some Windsor Violet would help. Windsor Violet is a nice dark cool color. Just a touch of burnt sienna because you don't want it to get too crazy with being gray because it is a pink tongue and then I need to let this dry and then I'll put in that little tongue wrinkle that dogs have down the center of their tongue it's still a little too wet you can just see as you paint you know um, that it needs to it needs to dry a little bit And there's a lot of little tongue lines on this guy, so I am going to let that dry a little bit, and then I can go back in, and then I'm going to go, while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to define the edge of the tongue over here a little bit more. I think this picture might have been taken with a flash, and so that washes out a lot of the shadows, and it makes it a little bit harder to get the tones looking good. But there, that pushes that tongue forward a little bit. I hear my baby boy coffin. He's been really sick this week. So 
Oh, and then on top of that, my printer died. <laughs> because I don't know exactly why, but I put in a maintenance cartridge. I have an Epson SureColor P800. It's got archival ink in it. It's a great printer, but it did not like that, and I've got an old computer. My computer's like six or seven years old, so I don't know what the problem was. Okay, this is still really wet, and I'm not really able to get much of a line in there, but I'll just keep kind of working on it. And I may need to go in and make this a two or three layer approach to this tongue, but I got the first little layer in, and as you can see, the most most of what I did was uh, I wet the whole tongue, and I was working wet and wet, and then I was careful to keep these white areas. See right here along the edge, and along here there's white areas. So you want to be careful to keep all the different gradations as intact as possible. Yes, kitty. I know you're there, kitty. I hear you, kitty. But I think that's a good start. And now for a commercial. Cheese. Say, and now for a commercial. Yeah, for a commercial. Oh, I want to pack as much information into this little tiny video I'm doing for you guys this morning. I am making this video available to all my viewers on YouTube, but if you would like to watch the comprehensive video I will have up soon on how I created this whole painting, which will include a lot of information about how to do um, fur using wet and wet techniques and wet and dry techniques, I will be publishing that soon and making it available to my Patreon subscribers in full so I do put a lot of free video content up so please just join my YouTube channel click to subscribe click the like button to help me grow my channel I always really really appreciate that <laughs> but um, if you want to follow me more closely you can join for five dollars a month on patreon um, it's really really easy to join and then just get back out of it um, they make it really easy and I like that so I'm not trying to rope anyone in here and the cool thing is if you join now you don't have to pay until December 1st so if you decide this is bogus you can just unsubscribe um, like the last day of November and you won't ever get charged anything so you can just come try with absolutely no financial risk